Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We have been dealing with the chapter Microbes in Human Welfare. Today we will study the sewage treatment plant. You know sewage treatment plant is actually dealing with treating the wastewater. Lot of wastewater is being generated from the apartments or the houses, then schools, hospitals, offices and other institutions and organizations. It includes the human waste, the human excreta from the toilets and also the kitchen sink and other uh, water which are produced as waste from home. How to treat with them? We have developed a lot in technology but so far nothing better than the use of micros we could still identify for treating large amount of water on a large scale. You know when the wastewater is directly released into the nearby water bodies, maybe it is a river or a sea. It may contain lot of microbes or infectious agents. Especially if this waste is coming from a hospital, imagine the amount of infectious agents present in them. So using a sewage treatment plant, we are basically reducing the pollution level in that water, then we are releasing into it. Here, we cannot absolutely clear the water or purify the water. That is not our aim. We are trying to reduce the pollutants present in that water, make it less harmful, then ultimately we have to release it to the nearby water body. So instead of simply releasing it into the nearby water body, we are reducing the harmful effect and then releasing it. That is the idea of sewage treatment plant. And sewage treatment plant works under two main processes. First is a primary treatment, which is a physical treatment. Whereas secondary treatment is a biological treatment. So what is the difference between physical and biological? Physical means no involvement of microbes. Physically we are filtering it. Whereas in the second stage we are making use of microbes to deal with the organic matter. Because we know this wastewater contains the organic waste from the uh, organisms. right? So we need to use some microbes for our help in the secondary stage. So let us discuss different stages or different steps involved in sewage treatment plant. So if we start with the physical treatment which is the primary treatment. So sewage treatment plant will be collecting the wastewater from all the nearby houses and other organizations and uh, um, schools etc. And they will be passing it through a filtration process. It's a physical filtration where any floating debris is there. It may contain the waste and uh, the other uh, maybe the piece of papers or uh, um, clothes, old clothes or rags or any other things which are floating in that. All those will be filtered only the water with the, some amount of the waste will be going inside. So big uh, floating debris will be removed in the first stage filtration. Now we are taking it to the second tank. Second tank is a sedimentation tank where we allow the water to stay still or allow it to settle down. So what will settle down basically? The waste, the excreta and along with that silt or uh, sand and a grit means the pebbles, grit and all. Everything will settle and there will be some fluid around or the water will remain on top. Is this water clean? No, absolutely not. But only thing is that all big particles have settled down. So here we get two fractions. What is settled is called a primary sludge. Means we are talking about primary treatment, right? The sludge we are getting or the sedimented particles are called a primary sludge. At the same time, uh, the water that we are getting above is called a primary effluent. Now what are we going to treat further? Sludge or effluent? Effluent. Because sludge we can dry it and use it as manure in the fields. Whereas the effluent is the water content which is going to be released into the nearby water body. So we have to make it less harmful. So for that purpose we are taking it from the primary treatment to the secondary treatment. Okay. So in primary treatment it is only a physical treatment which are the two stages only filtration and sedimentation. Sedimentation will give us primary sludge at the bottom and primary effluent on top. Primary sludge will be removed and used as manure whereas primary effluent will be sent to the biological treatment or the secondary treatment. Coming to biological treatment, the primary effluent is now given to the second stage that is biological treatment where we use uh, microbes for this process. So first this uh, primary effluent is reaching here and here we add some uh, aerobic bacteria along with some fungi called a fluke. 
you know that the fungi has got filamentous body called a hypha so many hyphae will be entangled to form something called a mycelium so the bacteria get entangled in this mycelium and this is called as phloc so this phloc consists of aerobic bacteria and a uh, fungi so they need a lot of oxygen so here comes the importance of a concept called a bod or biochemical oxygen demand b o d it is otherwise called a biological oxygen demand also or biochemical oxygen demand i will explain you you have to understand this very well i will tell you about two samples suppose this is sample a and this is sample b okay sample a has a lot of organic waste in it organic means what biodegradable waste whereas here uh, the waste is very less so we know that in this the organic matter will be depleted or digested by aerobic bacteria so when they are depleting they utilize lot of oxygen so in which of these samples do you require more oxygen of course the first case because in the first tank or the first water sample the organic matter is more organic waste is more so more oxygen will be required for the bacteria to digest or deplete these waste materials okay so as a result the oxygen content of that water will be less what is the consequence other organisms living in that water will struggle for getting oxygen so you understood bod so in this we are, uh, learned that whenever the organic matter is high in a water sample its pollution content is very high right as a result more oxygen is required the level of oxygen in the water will be less that means bod is high oxygen demand is high bod means oxygen demand but oxygen level will be low so ultimately we have to say higher the bod higher the potential of pollution okay higher the bod higher the polluting potential so our idea is to reduce the bod in this uh, primary effluent for that we are using aerobic bacteria and fungi and since it is uh, using aerobic bacteria and fungi in this tank we are not keeping it stagnated but com continuous agitation is happening so when we stir it continuously or agitate it continuously oxygen will come inside and it will allow the bacteria to multiply as a result they will deplete all the organic matter Um, so we will be taking samples to check the bod quite uh, frequently and finally when we see that bod level has come down and it is safe for releasing into the water body understood so uh, bod we can define as the amount of oxygen required for depleting all the organic content or organic matter present in 1 liter of water so usually ecologists test the pollution like this they collect samples from different water bodies and check the bod if they find bod is high pollution is high bod is less pollution is less now uh, we have brought the bod level to a considerably low level which is safe to be released into the nearby water body so now it has got phlogs and aerobic bacteria also we don't want to throw them like that so what we do is we send them to the next tank another settling tank here so again we allow it to settle down here no agitation we are just keeping it so that it will settle so it is the secondary treatment so here whatever is settling down is the another sludge which is called a activated sludge why are we calling it as activated sludge is it organic matter no because all organic matter depleted in the previous tank now what is left there only phlogs so the phlogs are settling down as a result we call it as an uh, activated sludge what we are getting above is called a secondary effluent so in the settling tank here we get activated sludge and secondary effluent now secondary effluent we know it is safe for release so we will release into the nearby water body now what to do with the phloc or the activated sludge little bit of sludge, uh, activated sludge or the phloc will be given to the previous tank as an inoculum we have come across this word before when i taught you the curd making we know after boiling the milk and bringing it to room temperature we add little bit of a previously prepared curd to it which is acting as inoculum or starter which means it has millions of bacteria in it which will speed up the process the same way here a little bit will be given to the previous tank so that they will keep on multiply and the rest we don't want 
So we give it to another tank called a anaerobic sludge digester where sludge is digested with the help of anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria means they don't want oxygen and also usually decomposers are anaerobic. So these decomposers will decompose this aerobic bacteria and that story is also over. So uh, sewage treatment plants are used for more than 100 years now. All the countries use more or less the same method but with a little variation in their technologies. But uh, in India we have two major plants produced that is one is Ganga action plant and Yamuna action plant. You know Ganga and Yamuna are two major rivers in India but they are highly polluted. When their pollution level was going beyond a limit, government of India planned to save Ganga and Yamuna. So initially they started Ganga action plan. It was a multi-crore project uh, and as a result they created a lot of sewage treatment plan on the banks of Ganga so that we could reduce the pollution before releasing it to the water. The same way later we started Yamuna action plan as well. As I mentioned earlier, still the best method to uh, deal with the human excreta or other waste is nothing but the microbes. Hope you understood the concepts very well. Uh, any doubt you can comment in the comment box. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.